Amen. Good evening, God's people. Good evening. Why don't we all stand? We'll open in prayer this evening. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Just another day you've given us, Lord, and Lord, for bringing us midway through the week. And Lord, we're excited to be here just to, to gather in your presence, Lord, to, to receive what you have for us. And Lord, we just pray you, you be in our midst this evening, Father, have our, our hearts, our ears, our eyes, Lord, our full attention. And Lord, just bless Brother Regis as he brings the word forward. And we just give you all thanks and praise this evening. In your awesome holy name we pray. Amen. Shaking, we trust forever in your name, the name of Jesus. We trust the name of Jesus, you are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher, you are the only king forever, forevermore. You are victorious, you are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever, forevermore. You are victorious. Unmatched in all your wisdom, in love and justice you will reign. Every knee will bow. We bring our expectations. Our hope is anchored in your name. In the name of Jesus. We trust the name of Jesus. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. Banner high, we lift the name of Jesus from age to age. You reign, your kingdom has no end. We lift our banner high, we lift the name of Jesus from age to age. You reign, your kingdom has no end. You are the only King forever, Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious, you are the only King forever, Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious, you are. Lift you higher, you are the only king forever, forevermore. You are victorious, you are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher, you are the only king forever, forevermore. You are victorious. Come to the well that never runs. 
Just deep praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you. Forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none. Days. I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, and let every breath that I am never cease to worship you shout to the Lord all the earth let us sing power and majesty praise to the King mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Shout to the Lord, shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. The mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound. Of your name, I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise of heaven. Nothing compares to the Heavenly Father, we just thank you this evening, Lord, that we can boldly claim my Jesus, my Savior, and there's none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. Lord, your love is so incredible, so awe-inspiring, so overwhelming at times, so, so deep, so vast that given a thousand lifetimes we can never explore the depths or just how much it is, Lord, and we thank you for that. Just your awesomeness, Lord, your your majesty, your glory. And Lord, we just desire to behold you this evening, Father, as we get into your word, Lord, just speak to us all, Lord. Just individually, Lord, you touch every one of our hearts that are gathered here, those receiving this at home as well. And Lord, we just give you thanks and praise this evening. And Lord, you have this meeting in your awesome and holy name. All God's people said, amen. Amen. Go ahead and greet those around you.
Praise the Lord. Yeah. Good evening, family of God. Praise the Lord. Um, just a few announcements um, for tonight. Uh, we've been announcing, um, oh, actually, uh, yesterday uh, the ladies had a Bible study, and they used that time to put uh, the uh, blessing bags together. So uh, this uh, Saturday, uh, after morning prayer, um, the idea is to go out with these blessing bags and uh, bless someone that needs it. Praise the Lord. So that will be uh, this Sunday, I'm sorry, this Saturday uh, after morning prayer. And then uh, this coming Sunday is uh, communion. So have a few days to be thinking about that. And uh, for those of you that are uh, at home and aren't going to be able to be uh, a part of us uh, here at the church, uh, Lord willing, that will give you opportunity to go out and gather the elements so that you can partake of communion with us. So this coming Sunday, communion. So uh, Pastor Mike is not here, but uh, Brother Regis will be sharing, and we're taking a break today from the life of David. So uh, Brother Regis, you come up. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here tonight. I'm going to start with the question and then four possible answers. Which way are you looking? Which way are you looking? Are you looking down? Are you looking out? looking inside or looking up which way are you looking with those quest with that question in your mind we're going to do a little quiz okay so in your head you don't have to write it down we're going to take a little quiz you can do it in your head are you overwhelmed are you overwhelmed what are what are what does that mean? It has a it can mean a lot of things, but some things that it can mean is is feeling defeated, fe feeling buried beneath something, submerged, overwhelmed, like like a, a a city that's flooded is overwhelmed by the water. It can mean feeling beat, like you've lost feeling swamped overwhelmed like a like a boat in 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 the water in the ocean in the river and it's being overwhelmed it's being swamped by the waters by the storm waters overpowered heavy burdened are you are you overwhelmed so according to the amd site little quiz we're going to take ask your ask this question some signs of feeling overwhelmed you know they did a study this was 2018 2018 that was a great year wasn't it <laughs> 2019 the good old days right i remember at the end of 2019 uh, our daughter nina treated us um kathy myself, our son, and her, to a trip to Florida. As much as I love Disneyland, I'm not a Disneyland lover, but she took us to Disney World, and it was wonderful. It was a great time. We just had a great time. We, come, we came back, and it was Christmas and everything. And um, January, a couple weeks into January, we're not feeling great. And like three weeks into January, there's this thing that's called COVID comes out overwhelmed and then everything that's happened since then so many things in in our personal lives have you had something overwhelm you in your own personal life that maybe hasn't touched other people's lives but it's touched your life we we have things that have touched and are touching us like what's going on in israel right now in the Middle East and in, in Gaza, the, the people. You know, Jesus loves them all. It's overwhelming. Some signs of being overwhelmed can be isolating yourself. 
Yes or no? Always tired. These are medical signs. Being irritable. Doing weird eating patterns, like maybe eating too much or not enough or the wrong things. Having a lack of focus and motivation. Forgetting things. Having a negative attitude, an overwhelming negative attitude about life and the things around us. Being emotional. Not just emotional, but, you know, extra emotional. And another one they listed was always being in a hurry. So now that you've done the quiz, if you've if you got at least half of these, you could turn around to your wife or your husband and say, you're overwhelmed. <laughs> tell, tell your parents, you're overwhelmed. <laughs> tell your friend, you're overwhelmed, right? No, I'm just kidding. Tell yourself if that's true. Is there anyone? Man, I think I hit every single one of those. I feel overwhelmed. You know, as, as people of God, as people of faith, we have an extra burden on us. Not just the physical things in our life, the struggles that we have, the things that happen to everybody, but just we have an extra burden on us. A burden when we see something happening, we know it breaks the heart of God that we, we, we see that God has a plan, but you know, in the meantime, people are rebelling from God and, 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 and people are hurting, people are dying. You know, when we see what Hamas did in Israel brutally, it breaks our heart. You know, we, we know that God loves them and we know that God loves the people in other places, in Gaza too. There's these things, they overwhelm us. David, who we've been talking about on Wednesday nights in Psalm 61, 8, we're going to just spend a few minutes here. He wrote a song about this. In Psalm 61, I don't know exactly where he was at when he wrote this short song, but we know that David had was on the run, that, that he was having struggles, that Saul was after him. And, and here David says in Psalm 61, Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings, Selah. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life, his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. And so I will sing praise to your name forever that I may daily perform my vows. David here, he, he, he describes what he's going through in his heart. And he says, I am overwhelmed. I feel defeated. I, my heart feels down. I'm not just in a cave physically, but my heart, I'm isolated. And, and this is a struggle. But we see that David on this, this level, this physical level, the things that he was going through, that he cried out, that he, he prayed. He poured out his heart to God. These are things that, that we know to do when, 
when we're overwhelmed, but they're not easy to do. He, it says he abided in the shelter. He spent time with God. He spent time with, with God's presence and thinking about that. It says that he, he was declaring his trust in God, his hope. He was saying, I have nothing else to hope in. You are my trust, my only trust. And he said he made vows. What those vows are exactly aren't written here. But what are vows? They're like the day that you get married and you exchange vows with your husband or your wife. They're a commitment. He said, God, I am committed to you. Even right now in this state of being overwhelmed, I am committed to you. I have made my vow to you. And and vows are two ways. It's not just the wife that makes vows to the, the husband, the man. It's not the other way. They both exchange vows. God had already made his commitment known to David. He said, I have a plan for you. I will take care of you. You will be king. I will deliver you. I will save you. And then at the end of all this, while he's still in his overwhelmed state, it says, I will sing praise to your name. He, he praises God. He worships God with his words. Not only did he worship God with his words, but with his life with his attitudes, with his commitment. And it's not easy. Jesus said that in the last days, people's hearts, because of the things going on, that people's hearts would become so overwhelmed that their hearts would fail them, that they would be overwhelmed by great trouble. In the book of Luke, chapter 21, the disciples asked Jesus, about the end of the age, the end times, the last days. In verse 7, So they asked him, saying, Teacher, but when will all these things be? What, will, what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? Verse 8, Jesus said, Take heed that you don't be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has drawn near. Therefore, do not go after them. But when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified. For these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. And then he said to them, A nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilence. And there will be fearful signs and great signs from heaven. Father, we just pray tonight as we spend a few minutes in your word that as we think about where we're looking, Lord, that you would encourage us, Lord, to look up. God, when our hearts are overwhelmed, Lord, that you would encourage us, Lord, to look up. We pray that you would speak to us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said, you know, we're living in the last days, right? This, this was written over 2,000 years ago. And the last days, the signs of the times are described as birth pains. Um, probably if you're a mom, and well, if you're a mom, you were pregnant, right? And you know what that means, birth pains. And guys, you know, if you're married and, and your wife was pregnant, you probably know because she was probably yelling at you like, leave me alone. I'm hurting. We did the Lamaze class with Kathy, and I was in there going, okay, okay, go like this. <laughs> and she's like, stop it! Get out of my face! And I'm like, why did we waste the last six months to go to those dumb classes if I can't use what I learned? You know, and so I'm like, okay, I'll try it again. Ready? No, we'll be okay. <laughs> stop it! Quit breathing in my face! 
But the birth pains, it's like, you know, as the months go by and then maybe, you know, six months or whatever into it and you have a contraction and a pain, you're like, ugh. But you know it's too soon, probably. I mean, if the baby's premature. But usually pregnancies are nine months. But as time goes by, there's a time where, you know, the, the, the woman, the, the mom, starts feeling contractions. And what that means is, you know, the... The house where the baby's at, the uterus, is a big muscle. And God made it so at a certain time, at the right time, that muscle is squeezing to get the baby into this wonderful world. And it gets stronger and stronger. There's a bunch of other things that happen too. But I, I remember one of the things that we wanted was, uh, Kathy wanted, we wanted to have the baby like, kind of like a good old-fashioned way where, you know, you're sleeping in the middle of the night and then, you know, all of a sudden the bed is kind of wet and you're like, uh-oh, I think something's happening. The water broke and there's contractions. And then we get a call and wake up the parents at 2 in the morning and say, we're going to the hospital. <laughs> so guess what? That's what we got. You know, like, I don't remember what time it was. It was early. It was early in the morning and she's like, I think we need to go to the hospital. I'm like, Okay, let's go. And she's feeling these pains, these contractions. And so we went and we called our parents and we told them we're there. And they got there like, I don't know, four or five, six in the morning or something. And what do you do? You wait. Wait. And wait. In the meantime, they're doing things, they're checking things and all that. And then in the meantime, the mom's having a contraction. And as time goes by, they get stronger and closer and closer and closer together. I I think for us, we waited how many hours? Was it 36? It was a long time. Yeah. I mean, it was a long time for me, but it was a really long time for her. And then at some point, it just gets really close. And Jesus said that's how the signs of the times would be. But he said that there would be some things that happen that there would be destruction that's getting closer and closer together. That there would be deception that gets more and more intense and closer together. That there would be division among people, among families, among nations, amongst countries in the world. And that seems like it's getting more and more. Even in our own country, you know, before it was like, you know, you got uh, conservative people and liberal, right? This, this politics, that politics. We, we struggle pro-life, no pro-life, pro-choice. COVID hit, you know, well, we believe in it. We don't believe in it. You got to do this and that. And then all of a sudden, like, race is coming up strong. And it's just getting more and more. Now it's religious war. Now even like, even in say the Liberal Party, Democrat Party, they're even starting to divide amongst themselves. I mean, like our president, for whatever reason, God put in his heart, he's supporting Israel, which is amazing. But even amongst themselves they're fighting, there's just division, more and more. And Jesus said there would be death. And these are signs of the times. And Jesus said these things would become so intense, so strong, that people's hearts start failing them and over, being overwhelmed. And he said, this is just the beginning. By the grace of God, you're saved. And as you look up, when, when God tells Jesus, go, there's going to be a trumpet that blasts and we're going to look up and be like, oh, it's Jesus. He's calling me. And you're going to be snatched away and raptured if you're ready. Taken up. And then the earth's going to get to do its thing for a while and Satan's going to have its, his rule on the earth for a while. And then after a short period of time, seven years, the Father's going to tell Jesus, time 
Let's go make it right. And we're all going to come with him on horses. And, and Jesus is going to walk onto the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And he's going to rule and reign and bring justice. But before that, it's very overwhelming. So, Jesus said that we should be ready. That we should be watchful. That we should be waiting. And that we should be wanting Him. What does this have to do with overcoming being overwhelmed? In in verse, let's look at this verse right here. Twenty five. Luke twenty one, twenty five through twenty eight. And there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity in the sea and the waves roaring. You know, it's interesting because um, I, I don't believe necessarily like in climate change the way that it's being promoted. But you know what? This is interesting. You know, like when you say God is love, that's true. But like, what does that mean? But God is love. It's true. But what, what exactly do you mean by that? And here Jesus says of the weather and the earth and all these elements are going to be really messed up. So you could be like, well, that's just climate change. Or we can be like, wow, Jesus said this over 2,000 years ago and it's happening today. He told us this was going to happen. He told us the weather and times and everything are just going to be in turmoil. It's not just going to be our hearts and the world and nations and people, but it's the whole planet's getting crazy. And he told us this was going to come to pass. In verse 26, men's hearts failing them from fear. Isn't that something that is like so strong in our hearts today and and is fear? I have fear. I I don't honestly really think, I I think I can tell you honestly, I, I, I know where I'm going when I die. I don't have fear of death in the sense of like, well, am I going to heaven or hell? I mean, Jesus came into my heart and, and, I be, and I believe that when I die, I'm going to be with Him. He saved me. But I have fear. I, I have fear, how am I going to take care of my family? My wife? I have a responsibility for my kids, even though they're married one day when we have grandkids. I have concern for the church. When I'm at work, I'm concerned for my coworkers if things were to happen. If somebody was to come in and want to harm people at work, I have fear, I have concern. I mean, I don't want to just go run and hide in a closet somewhere and make sure I'm safe. I don't want to be that way. I hope I'm not that way. We care. We care about people. We care about others. There's fears. Jesus said there would be great fears during these times. People's hearts failing them. Which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Verse 27 and 28. And then we'll close with the points of where we're looking. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in cloud with power and great glory. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws nigh. Jesus tells the disciples, they're like, check out this temple. And he's like, it's going to be destroyed. And it was destroyed. The Romans came in and destroyed everything. He tells them about the signs of the times. I mean, I'd be like... If I was one of the disciples with Jesus, I'd be like, seriously, Jesus, you're really bumming me out right now. <laughs> you know, we're telling you how awesome the temple is, and it's God's temple and everything, and we're coming to worship this this Sabbath, this, you know, and it's going to be great. And Jesus is like, this is all going to be destroyed. Huh? They're sitting on the Mount of Olives, and he's like, it's all going to be destroyed. Huh? 
And then, yeah, there's going to be earthquakes and pestilence and just like goes on and on and on about all these things and the a coming one and the abomination of desolation and wars and all rumors of war and all this stuff. At that point, I'm just like, stop talking, Jesus. I can't handle it anymore. Really, we can't handle it. And then he even told them, he's all, you're going to be persecuted for my name's sake. People are going to hate you. Be like, this was a really discouraging message you shared with us, Jesus. And then Jesus, like this one verse right here, these two verses, it's just like the knockout punch of hope for the overwhelmed heart. He says, then they will see the Son of Man coming in cloud with power and great glory. And now, not great glory, but great glory. And when these things begin to happen, he doesn't say, look down. Look down. Feel like you're losing hope. He shares in the next verses about looking down, about being weighed down by the cares of this life, looking down at the earth, being weighed down by the cares of this life. In Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, it talks about looking down, having the weights of certain things that we don't need in our lives, pulling us down and burning us about sin that we don't need in our lives, that we can lay it off and not cause us to look down. You know, if you're carrying a weight, you have a heavy weight, usually it's not like, It's like looking down. It's heavy. There's certain things that are burdens that we can't get rid of. But he's talking about things that are our choice. And in, and in Luke, Jesus talked about a rich guy with the barn and who had plenty. Like really, he could have just stopped. But the rich, the rich fool said, oh, what am I going to do now? Well, I guess I'll just get more. In other words, the focus is down, having an earthly focus rather than a heavenly and eternal focus. God help me. In all these things, my heart is so overwhelmed because too often I'm just looking down at so many things. This was just a thought that when we are buried in the ground six feet, Will that be the most amount of time we spent looking up? When I'm buried, assuming I get buried, <laughs> there's other ways to go, right? One way is like, do, 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 whoosh. right? I don't think there would be anybody here, but that'd be sad. Like, if there's one of you left here, you're like, where did everybody just go? <laughs> I know we're laughing about it, but but when we're buried in the ground, we're we're buried looking up usually. Will that be the most time we've spent on this earth looking up? Jesus says he doesn't say look down. Are we are we spending too much time looking at others? Lord, what about them? Lord, did you see what they did? Lord, do you see what they're doing? In in First Thessalonians chapter four, nine through twelve, before he talks about God keeping his promises and this and the second coming and rapture and everything, they're told, just work hard, be a light, mind your business, care for other people. Jesus told Peter, he's all, Don't worry about John. He's got his own thing. I got something else for him. He's all, do your thing that I called you to do. Looking at others too much. Or maybe sometimes it could be me looking down on others too much. Or third, looking inside. Am I spending too much time looking inside of myself? Some of that is good. James tells us, look inside like you're looking at the Word and you got to see what God wants to do. But sometimes we... We, we spend too much time taking selfies of ourselves. I don't mean just pictures, but I mean like focused on me, on ourself. Look at me. Growing is good, but there's so much focus on self-help. 
Having contentment is good, but there's so much focus on self-fulfillment. I'm not happy. I'm not happy in this relationship. I'm not getting what I want. What do I want out of life? Looking inside, maybe trying to hide some of those things by even self, self-abuse. Even, even as Christians, we can often feel like, well, I'm just not good enough. I'm no good. And Jesus is like, you're, you're no good. I saved you. I'm going to use you. I love you. I'm working in your life. But we are encouraged not to focus on looking down or looking at others or looking inside. But he says to look up. To look up for your redemption draws nigh. To focus on God's faithfulness and on his love like David did in Psalm 61 that he wrote. In Philippians chapter 2, we are told to not just look out for what we want and our interest, but for others' needs and what they need, like Jesus does. Corey Ten Boom said this, and we've heard this quote, Pastor Ray used to say it all the time. If you look at the world, you will be distressed or overwhelmed. If you look within, you will be depressed. But if you look at God, you will be at rest. Where are we looking? Where am I looking? Regis, where are you looking? How much time am I looking in that direction? Jesus said, stand up, look, for your salvation is near. So yeah, these things are overwhelming, you guys. Some of you have extra overwhelming things in your life. You're like David, crying out, Lord, my heart is so overwhelmed. And we all have overwhelming things. And there's, as we look to others, they have even greater overwhelming things going on in their life. In Jeremiah 12.5, I don't know if this verse is encouraging or discouraging or if it's a chastisement or what, but we're told, if you run with the footmen and they have wearied you, then how can you contend with the horses? And if in the land of peace in which you trusted they wearied you, then how will you do in the flood flood plain of Jordan? We are encouraged when our hearts are overwhelmed like David. Jesus told us when we see these things to look up more and more for our redemption draws nigh. To have our focus on others' needs, on, on what they're going through in their life, to serve like Jesus, to reach out, to care, and to realize that One day, the trumpet's going to blow, and if we're ready, we're going to go with the Lord. Amen? Amen. We're going to have worship right now in time of prayer. And I'm sharing this with you because, man, I'm going through this. You know? And maybe tonight you're going through this. And as, as we pray tonight... Um, maybe Nathan can start. I was thinking we'll call the 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 elders up, and and they'll stand here and look at you. We could stand, and tonight let's pray together. Let's pray for our eyes to be focused. Let's pray that we would look up, that we would look how we can serve others around us. And maybe tonight, you're not ready. You can make it ready with the Lord. So why don't we stand right now, and I'll call the elders up. And as we begin to worship, I'm, I am going to pray right now. I want to pray for even what's going on tonight. And have the, the elders come up right now. And then if the Lord touch your heart tonight and you need prayer, you can come up um, for prayer. Father, tonight... We, we want to thank you, God, for your faithfulness, Lord. And even though, Lord, our hearts can be so overwhelmed, Lord, by so many things. Some of them are valid, Lord. Lord, many of them are not. But, Lord, you see, Lord, even in the, these days that we're living in, God, we just pray, Lord, that we would look up and that we would look how we can share your love with others too, Lord, that we would serve well at church, at home, wherever you have us, Father. 
We just pray for Israel, the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for them that you would minister to them. Use the Christians there, the saints, to, Lord, reach out, to be a light. Meet their needs, Lord. God, you are not done. You care about the Jewish people, Father. Lord, and you care about the people in Gaza and, Lord, the Middle East countries. You love them, Lord, too. You died for all of us, Lord. May God you use whatever is going on to reveal Jesus to those that are willing to receive, Father. We thank you, God, for this time of prayer and worship in Jesus' name.
thing is left to prove my Savior lives because He lives I can face tomorrow because He Some of you are overwhelmed, not knowing what tomorrow brings, but we have the answer in Jesus. Amen. The word of God says that we rejoice in his salvation, and in his name we lift up the banner, the banner of Jesus. I just want to read one psalm as, as we close. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. 
then the swollen rivers or waters would have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we have a great Savior, that in the midst of trials, in the midst of perplexities, when we don't have the answers, Lord, you have the answers. We will not be overwhelmed. We will not be overwhelmed by the waters or fire or anything else, Lord, because you are our God. We lift the banner of Jesus over each one of us, Lord. Thank you again for the word tonight for Brother Regis. Continue to pray for the afflicted, for those who are going through difficult times. We have the victory in Jesus. Bless your people, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. This has been the hand of the Lord. While I was singing, somebody touch me. While I was singing, somebody touch me. While I was singing, somebody touch me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. And glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. While I was crying, while I was crying, somebody touched me. While I was crying, somebody touched me. While I was crying, somebody touched me. I stood in the hand of the Lord. Glory, 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 somebody touched me. Glory, 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 somebody touched me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. This has been the hand of the Lord. While I was praising, while I was praising, somebody touch me. While I was praising, somebody touch me. While I was praising, somebody touch me. This has been the hand of the Lord. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. What's up in the hand of the Lord? Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. What's up in the hand of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Lord bless the rest of your night.